kalau engkau hadir di engkau aku. Tuhan mengasih penyayang dan ke engkau ada di murah hati Tuhan Yang sabar Tuhan Maka hatiku hancur Kasihanilah aku Tolonglah aku Kasihanilah aku Aku berseru pada ampunilah dosaku Tuhan Ya Tuhan Ampuni ampun salahku Tuhan Aku tidak dapat membayar hutang dosa Tuhan saudaraku Bahwa dia Adalah penguasa Atas hidupmu Kami patahkan dan oleh Bilur-bilur Yesus Menyembuhkan pada malam hari ini Haleluya Stroke 8 tahun Disembuhkan oleh Tuhan Yesus So when we are afraid, we put our trust in God. Jesus loves you and He hears you. Good day, brothers and sisters. God bless us all. This day, brothers and sisters, we meet again in this Bible message to see what God wants from us, to learn from the Bible, to see what God wants 
from us in our life. Let us first listen to the word of God. And before we begin the service, let us all pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we are thankful for your grace and for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, please bless us during this service so that we may understand the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the service again. On this service, we will talk about hope from God. We are living in the times where future is always seems to be so bleak, where the future seems so unknown, where the future seems that it is so difficult, where the future also always seems that it will always be dark. But brothers and sisters, these days first we'll talk about hope from God, hope from Jesus, a great hope and great future. I will read to you from the Bible from Jeremiah 29, Verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Once more, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Brothers and sisters, in this dark world, in, we don't know about what is going on in our future. That is a very unknown thing for us. We may know about our past because it has already gone by. We know what we see right now on the present times, but we don't know anything about our future. We don't know anything about what is going on in the future. We don't know about anything. We don't know about what is going on tomorrow. We don't know what is going on an hour after this. We don't know what is going on next week. But brothers and sisters, it is said in the Bible that thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Brothers and sisters, future is so unknown from us. And we dread the future. We fear the future because it is so unknown. It is so unknown from us. Yes, we may have plans in this life. We may predict what is going on in the future. We may try to see what is going on in the future. We made plans. We made preparations. We made backups. But we don't know what is going on in the future. We don't know what will happen the next day. But brothers and sisters, only Jesus, only the Lord guarantees that our future will be of peace and not of evil. That our future will be full of hope. Our future will not be a future that will be full of defeat. Our future will not be a future full of death. Our future will not be a hopelessness. But God said in here that God will give us peace and not of evil, brothers and sisters. Only God can promise you things like this. People in the world will not promise you about the future because I don't know about my future. Nobody knows about the future. I cannot promise your future. Nobody can promise about your future. No government will know about the future. Nobody will know. But the Lord knows about the future. And it is said in the Bible, it will be of peace and not of evil. We will read another verse from the Bible. I'll read to you from James. James chapter 4. Verse 13 until verse 14. It is said in the Bible, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city. Spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanish away. Brothers and sisters, this is not a reality in this life. This is not a verse in the Bible that is designed to scare you. But this is just stating the facts that we don't know what will happen tomorrow. 
In verse 13, yes, we can plan to go here and there. We can plan to make profits here and there. We can plan to make our life better by doing this and by doing that. But we don't know what will happen tomorrow. This is the reality of the life we are living in. This is the reality of the life we are living in. It is said in the Bible, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanish away. This is the reality, brothers and sisters, that our life is just a, can be just a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanish away. Brothers and sisters, we see a lot of death and trouble in this world. We see a lot of accidents. We see a lot of trouble in this world. We see deaths in this life. We see sickness in this life. We don't know about what will happen tomorrow. Something could just happen. And in a flash, everything changed. Something could just happen. And then suddenly we are in a different kind of situation. That is why it is in the Bible. It is just a favor that appears for a little time. And then vanish away. Because we don't know what will happen tomorrow. The Bible are saying that, yes, you can make preparation today and tomorrow. We'll go this and do this and do, do this and do that. Go to the city and take profits in here. Try to make this and try to make that. But we don't know what will happen tomorrow, brothers and sisters. This is just a reality. This is just a fact that we don't know what will happen tomorrow. We can try out our best to do something for tomorrow. But it will be nothing. We read another verse, a similar verse, from Luke chapter from Luke chapter 12, verse 16 until verse 21. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, in verse 16. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and, on, and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool! This night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Brothers and sisters, this is the similar verse to the James chapter 4. That we may have the best plans in life. We may have built things. To satisfy our life in the future generations. We may have prepared ourselves so well. But it will be a man of nothing. If our soul is required of us this night. If our soul is required of us tomorrow. Because all of our preparations will be nothing. Brothers and sisters. This is the reality of the life we are living in. We may try our best to preserve our soul. To preserve our life. To preserve our prosperity. But it will be nothing. It will be nothing because we don't know about the future. But the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19. Verse 21. Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. Brothers and sisters, everything else may fall apart. Everything else may go unplanned. Everything else may went aside. Everything else may went away. But there is one thing that will stand. The Lord's counsel. The plan of the Lord. The future given by the Lord. It will stand, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. This is the answer to our life. Stop relying on our plans. Stop relying on our own wisdom. Stop relying on the plans of others. Stop relying on other people. 
but rely on the Lord, brothers and sisters, because everything else may fall apart, but the Lord's counsel that will stand, brothers and sisters. It will stand forever and ever, brothers and sisters. Only His plan will stand. Only His plan will work, brothers and sisters. And what kind of plan, brothers and sisters? We have read before in Jeremiah 29 that it will be thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. That kind of plan, brothers and sisters. It will not be a plan that is bad for us. It will not be a plan that will destroy our life. It will not be a plan that will be difficult for us. It will not be a troublesome plan. But it will be a great plan, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we may have prepared everything in this life. But what will happen if our soul is taken away? But Lord Jesus, He have a plan for us. He have a plan for our life. He also have a plan for our soul. He doesn't want us to be destroyed. He doesn't want us to be damned into hell. He does not want us to live a life full of defeat and life full of curse. He wants us to have a life full of blessing. He wants us to live in this life. And when we go die one day, He wants us to live in an everlasting life. The devil will always want us to have a bad life. He wants us to have a life full of hopelessness. But God, God wants you to have a life full of joy, full of hope, full of salvation. He wants that kind of life for you, brothers and sisters. That's why He came down from the heavens. The Bible says in John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, everybody may have plans this and that kind of plan, but nobody plans for your everlasting life. Nobody is perfectly planning for your future. Nobody is knowing about your future like he did. This day, brothers and sisters, accept him. So that He may give you a great life. He may preserve your soul. He may give you a great life. Brothers and sisters, if we believe in Him, we will have an everlasting life. We will have a life full of future, a life full of hope, a great life, brothers and sisters. Believe in Him. Stop believing in yourself. If you have a life full of hopelessness right now, if you are feeling difficulties in your life, stop trusting in yourself. Stop believing in yourself and come to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, if this day you want to come to Jesus, you can follow my prayer. We will pray together. You will pray together. You can follow my prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to believe in you. I want to trust in you. I want to be with you, Lord Jesus. I want a future full of hope from you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, please enter my heart. I am a sinner and I have lost my way. But Lord Jesus, please wash me in your cleansing blood. Lord Jesus, be my Lord and be my Savior from this day until forevermore. Be my King, be my Lord, be my Savior. Please enter my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the kingdom of God. A life full of joy, a life full of happiness, a life full of hope, brothers and sisters. Nobody in this world will guarantee you hope. But Jesus Christ, he will give you hope. And one more message, brothers and sisters. It is said in the Bible in Jeremiah 29. He wants us to be thoughts of peace and not of evil. What kind of things he can give from us? 
He will also heal us from our kind of sickness. He will heal us. The Bible say in, in Isaiah 53 verse 5. By his stripes we are healed, brothers and sisters. This is kind of life he wants us to have. He doesn't want us a life full of weakness. He doesn't want us a life full of lameness. He doesn't want sickness in our life. He wants healing in our life. And he can heal you. Any kind of disease you can think of. Be it cancer. Be it COVID-19. Be it tuberculosis. Be it blindness. Be it lameness. Any kind of disease. He will heal, brother and sister. Because that's what he wants from us, brother and sisters. That's what he wants for you and for me. A life full of peace. A life full of hope. A great future for you and for me. He wants us a healthy life. If you are sick, if you believe in Him, if you trust in Him that He can heal you, He will heal you, brother and sister. That simple. It's that simple. You don't need to do anything more. You don't need to do certain things. You don't need to pay certain people certain amount of money. No, brother and sisters. If you believe, you will receive the miracle. We all pray. If you are sick, put the right hand of the right hand of you to the part of your body where you feel sickness. It can be on your chest, it can be over your stomach, it can be on your head. God will heal any kind of disease, be it physical disease, be it mental disease, God can do miracles. Because he wants us to have a great life. We will pray, brothers and sisters, touch the part of your body where you feel sickness. And we pray together. Have faith. And you will receive the miracle today. Lord Jesus, I come to you, Lord Jesus, with my sickness. But I come to you with faith. And I believe. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will be healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am healed. Lord Jesus, I have faith that you have the power to heal my sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. I believe that some of you has experienced the fullness of healing of Jesus Christ. But if you haven't feel the full healing, continue to pray and continue to have faith. Jesus will heal you. If you have any kind of problem in your life, brothers and sisters, be it financial troubles, be it spiritual problems, be it family problems, brothers and sisters, Believe in Jesus Christ and he will heal you. Pray to him and he will do wonders in your life. Brothers and sisters, if you need to contact our prayer team, if you need our team to pray for you more, you can contact the number displayed. We have uh, contact service in English. We have contact service in Bahasa Indonesia. We have contacts in French. We will pray for you, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, finally, if you feel that this message has empowered you, if you feel that this message has blessed you, please do share this message to your friends, to your colleagues, and to your loved ones. Brothers and sisters, finally, God bless you, and God bless all nations around the world. Amen.